please feel free to pass it to the person to your left or to your right. <laughs> if that does not work, you just take it put it on the ground and stand on it. I guarantee you will take care of it. And uh, don't forget, we do have a Facebook page here at the Playhouse as well as Newport International. If you want to like it and share it, we have Instagram. We don't have a Twitter account yet, we haven't gotten that far, but we're working on it. If you want to like it, watch. Maureen Noel, Tanya Kalevi, Christopher Ferreira, Rick Bagley, and Josh Brody in A Christmas Cactus. See all y'all next time.
Santa with a gun. Oh, Santa's one tough cookie. You know, Fred, I was thinking about closing the office. But for the holidays? I mean, sure, business has been slow lately, and with me off to mark me. No, kind of I mean for good. For good? You don't be out of business, do you? That's the idea. But we're a team. It has nothing to do with you. It's just this detective business and all it's cracked up to be. What if it's not worth it? Not worth it. We've only been here for a year. Less than a year. You still haven't cleaned out the calls of the previous occupant. We're still getting Marley's junk mail. It was a time when this felt exciting, like... Like, what we did mattered, at least I'd hope so. Of course it matters. You are a private investigator. Yeah. Divorces, custody cases, professional peeping toms. All I do is track the broken bonds of love. Look, Fred, the only thing I've learned is how to stick it to your friends and lovers in a double cross. It's not always like that. Per day plus expenses. Look, Fred, there's enough money here that we could both take some time off to think things through. Think what? That you're crazy? I love my job. I love working with you. <laughs> Fred, there are other jobs. It's not just a job. On the lease, you've got to sign the lease. Sign it now, you could always break it later. In fact, just, uh, think, think about this. Think of all the great cases we've had. Great cases? Remember? We climbed through the massage parlor window, and the time we found the stolen gold plate, and you know what? Uh, what about the great moose head caper, when you and one little Westlake stole her husband's moose head right off the bedroom wall, and the two of you buried it and sent it back a treasure map? We didn't steal it. It was community property. Well, what about... What about Molly Spencer? You were the one who found your two kids after her ex-husband kidnapped them. Cops gave up on that case, but it was like a mission for you. No one else would take it. How did you think of giving all that up? How do you remember all this? I typed the files. Fred, I'm being serious. <clears throat> but sweetheart, you told me you always wanted to be a detective ever since you were a little kid. <laughs> yeah, a fedora, a trench coat, and a gun. That trusty piece of iron that never leaves your side. Using your instincts over your good sense. I was 12 when I told Sister Marguerite I wanted to be a detective just like my camera on the TV. She was impressed. She thought I needed more prayer. Uh, <laughs> I think you need some now. Oh, don't let her do this. How about your signature right there? Fred, I haven't done anything yet. Exactly. Sign. I just really can't see yourself doing something else, can you? Uh, I need to think. It, it's cold out there. Uh, I think better on the fire escape where I can listen to Tommy Sachs. Yeah, you can open the windows and just head off. You know, they don't let you have your own private fire escape and meditation area. <laughs> Running away? Stuart! That's me. Oh, you're the last person I thought I'd see here. Fred! Oh, no, I can't watch. I'd love to be on the hall. I'll be right back. Hey, it's all be nice of you, Fred. This is personal. It's not gonna be personal. Don't do anything radical. Don't you ever lock your doors or your windows? We don't stand on formality here. Formality has nothing to do with burglary. Don't worry, they never take anything. Hmm, so I heard. What's so interesting out there? Just a little saxophone music. What's on your mind, Stuart? No time for pleasantries? I, uh, I brought you a present. Oh, a king bearing gifts or just a deputy king? A Christmas cactus? Where did you find it? I, I thought every florist in town was sold out. Uh, I have my resources. I know it's your favorite. Zytocactus trunk cats. I, uh, I looked it up. Uh, I know a lot of things you like. Well, I hate that about you, Stuart, but thank you for the plant. Anything else on your mind? Any DA business? And? Oh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and? <laughs> Merry Christmas and? Happy New Year! <laughs> Stuart, what's up? You tell me, Cactus. Rumor has it you haven't signed your lease renewal yet. Did someone put out a press release? Uh, if it makes any difference, I approve. This isn't exactly the safest neighborhood. It's safe enough. So that's why you had a break in? They got the wrong address. Lay off. You know, Cactus, you could always come back to work for me at the DA's office. As an investigator, the offer's open, though. You've always ignored my advice, but but still, Cactus, it's a it's a good salary, you know. The uh, the offer is on the table. Uh, we could uh, we could work together. <laughs> you could do something about that car. Leave my car out of this. It's an eyesore. It's a classic. Oh, the '62 Plymouth is not a classic. <laughs> it's just too ugly to die. It's, it's too ugly to steal. Look, Cactus, let's not argue. Uh, uh, you know, if you really wanted a chain, you could always go back to law school. Law school? Yeah. Don't forget, I knew you.
when you were still Katie Bridget O'Reilly, when you were still interested in justice. I am. That's why I dropped out of law school. You're so wrapped up in the letter of the law, you wouldn't know justice if it mugged you on a blind alley. Oh, come. Now you're being unfair, Katie. It's cactus. Ah, uh, yes. Prickly, but pretty. I think you'd make a great attorney. Oh, now you insult me. Oh, cactus, I wasn't, wasn't trying to. Look, cactus, I am trying my darndest here to be nice. You know, some people actually think I'm a charming guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it says in the papers. It must be true. I, uh, I sent you a Christmas card. You sent half the city a Christmas card. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Santa in court. You'll go far, counselor. Look, I can't. Is that? I'm trying. Let's, why don't we start over? How about you? Come out with me tonight. What? To the mayor's Christmas ball. Oh, that's why you look like a magazine cover. Uh, you, you really think so? <laughs> yeah, most of the time you only look like a shirt ad. <laughs> oh. I hear that there'll be a lot of media there. Cactus, come with me. You want me to go with you tonight to the mayor's Christmas ball on five minutes notice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be uh, kind of spontaneous, you know? Spontaneous? Dressed like this? You look wonderful. And don't worry about it. I mean, people show up in just anything. Oh, yeah. now I'm wearing just anything. Oh, <laughs> Captain. That's all right. Yeah. Look, I, uh, I really did mean to call you earlier. So you plan a surprise attack? Sort of. You can't even call me up for a regular date, yet you think nothing of parading me around a black tie ball like you just dragged me in off the street. Cactus, that, that's not what I meant. Well, I, I wanted to call you. I, I tried to call you, but that never works. You, you always say no, or, or you just don't show up at the last minute because you say that you don't like to plan anything. Look, Cactus, I, I know that we may have had our differences in the past, but the, the new year is right around the corner. We could, we could start over again. We could, uh, we could be friends. We were friends once. I have this quirk, I have to like my friends. Cactus, it seems to me what you're really trying to say is I know what I'm trying to say. Don't tell me what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you you do this all the time, you bully. And now, now, Cactus. Oh. Courtroom tactics. Makes me crazy, and I'm dangerous when I'm crazy. Yes, very attractive. Well, go away. I have a, a party to go to. Oh, a party? Yeah, well, it's not your kind of party. So, uh, so go schmooze with the mayor, smile for the cameras, leave me in peace. This is the season for peace. I know what it is. I think you're still moping about over that old boyfriend of yours. He is not your business. So, so then he's gone. I knew it. You know what, Stuart? You really ought to try blondes, you know, body by Fisher, brains by Tinker. <laughs> I prefer redheads. Don't worry, Cactus. I'll grow on you. I can wait. You're certainly dressed for the part. Cactus, do you mind telling me why so many of our conversations end this way? Merry Christmas, Counselor. Oh, I'll be back. I don't know why yet. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Law school. Law school. Part of my class is how he always makes you feel so good. Oh, that man! What did he do? He told me I could go work for the DA's office. No, the swine. <laughs> and then he tried to take me to the mayor's ball. Oh, the black tie affair at the skylight room. What an insult. <laughs> No invitation, no notice, no time to dress. I think he thought I would actually go for it. A miscalculation. He's just so used to women just fawning over him. Well, I don't do that. You wouldn't have any fun working at the DA's office anyway. He couldn't boss people around the way you like to. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to go home? <laughs> this is the place. One, two, three, two. Office. I handle all the paperwork. Shut up! 
<laughs> My name is Smedley. Do you even know you? Perhaps in our five. Hold it. Smedley, do I know you? And this is Ramirez. Uh, Ramon Ramirez. I am pleased to meet you. I am very sorry about this intrusion. <laughs> Fred, check out their outfits. No doubt designed by the city jail. Oh, our tuxedos were at the cleaners. <laughs> but I got other things on my mind. Listen, Smedley, there must be some mistake. I don't know you. Oh, oh, where is he? I think you should leave. Not until your boss shows up. We got things to talk about. Excuse me? What boss? The sleaze ball put me in jail. I'm the boss around here and stop waving that thing around. Don't give me that crap, Marley. Where's Marley? Jake Marley? Yes, Senor Jacob Marley. Marley's dead. Muerto? <laughs> he can't be dead! I'm gonna kill him! But you said nothing about killing all Madre de Dios, not on Christmas! Well, you're too late, he died in his sleep. You're lying. Just last year. He's not here! The name on the door says O'Reilly. Oh, she is right, and it's O'Reilly. Probably <laughs> dead. No, oh, this can't be. You saying you got the drop on me again? Marley's dead. <laughs> this is my office now, sorry. But I dreamed about this. I worked it out every day. Every single day in that stinking hole. Marley's the one who gave him phony evidence. I spent two years in jail, and now he's dead. Well, he was a detective. If he put you in jail, he was probably just doing his job. It was a frame, and Marley knew it. Senior Spanner, he ain't just no good. You cannot get revenge on a man who is dead. He tries to make your soul sick. <laughs> <laughs> we should go. Oh, uh, I'm thinking. I'm so into Do I do it? I can't go back. I won't go back. I didn't steal that money. I was set up. Uh, what money? Innocent men don't usually carry an arsenal around. I was innocent, and they put me in jail. The world is full of paradox. I was there too. <laughs> Look, Smedley, I don't know you and you don't know me. Well, why don't you just leave? We could say you got the wrong office. We could say I never saw you. Yeah, we could say that. And we could also say I got Christmas cookies for brains. <laughs> so I'm out of here, you can call the cops. It's Christmas. I'll give you an hour. Oh, good, Red. That doesn't solve my problem. Wait a minute. I got a better idea. You. You're a private eye. A woman dick. <laughs> oh. That's right. And who are you? Uh, I'm just a rather associate. Uh, the executive secretary. You any good? Why? Are you comparison shopping? You better be good. Because I'm hiring you, Red. Start now. I know they stole that money and set me up. I've been thinking about it for a long time. All you got to do is find it. Wait a minute. If this man is dead, he didn't do nothing for me. I must find Teresa, my friend. This city is so big. Somebody's got to do this. Innocence must be vindicated. I read that in a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was that? I would like to know. We should always be improving ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, stay here for an hour, Ramon. That will take care of your problem, please. These streets do look familiar to me. I am close to the barrio. Oh, this is ridiculous. Hey, don't worry, I'll pay you. You know, later. <laughs> <laughs> Triple fees for future. Oh, that would be a nice chunk of change. And I don't work well at that point. But the gun stays until we establish some rules. Nobody leaves until we find it. Find what? Evidence. Real evidence. No problem. It's probably filed under E. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Smedley. Suppose you tell me who you are, where you came from, and what you want. Okay, but you gotta understand. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't want to hurt anybody. But this is serious. Smedley. Neville Smedley. Uh, Neville F. Smedley. What's the F stand for? Fezzlewick. Can I make something up? Not at the moment. Wait a minute, I remember you. You embezzled a million dollars from the Children's Hospital Fund. Uh, two million, I remember the headlines. Millions missing from Tiny Tim Fund. That money was never recovered. Oh, don't start on me, Red. I didn't do it and you're gonna prove it. How am I supposed to do that? 
You're the detective. <laughs> you had a trial. You ever gone through that? I didn't know what to do. I was shook. Railroaded. I, I think in numbers, not people. Weren't you some sort of low-level politician? <laughs> what do you mean, low-level? <coughs> I was assistant to the city clerk in charge of bookkeeping. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like very much you with it. That's my career. My life, only. Only what? When somebody decided I should be the fall guy for this little scheme, I figured I'd be too stupid to realize until it was too late. You know you've got to believe me. Mm, I'm thinking about it. Well, we're thinking hard. We need to set up a contract. Oh, it's good you are thinking of the details. <laughs> well, we'll start with the standard. We'll amend it as we go. Come on. This is Cactus O'Reilly, December 24th, 1995, at approximately 5.20 p.m. I was closing up the office, O'Reilly Consulting, when an intrusion... What an intrusion? I am not an intrusion. <laughs> the speaker is Neville F. Smedley. Just tell the story, Smedley. Well, okay. So one day, there I am in the office, working, paying taxes. Next thing I know, I'm under arrest. Two million dollars is missing from the handicapped children's fund. I get a jerk lawyer from the public defender, and then Marley shows up and gives him this phony evidence saying I did it. He was a detective. His job was to detect. Uh, Fred, take notes. Is technology wearing its ugly head again? So did you steal the money? Will I be here if I had a million bucks stashed away somewhere? Well, revenge is always a good reason. No, 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 no. Because it's a bad reason. But just... That is a good reason. <laughs> I didn't know Marley from John Doe. If he didn't frame me, then he was set up too. All I've been dreaming about is finding Marley and asking why. Why me? If you were an accountant, why didn't you figure it out? Just a bookkeeper, not a CPA for crying out loud. And they kept giving me these little white pills. Oh. Mm -hmm. Calm me down. <laughs> so what was the plan? Uh, the, uh... The Tiny Tim Fund was designed to finance an $11 million construction project for a new wing of the Children's Hospital. They had a $2 million kickback built in from the beginning. All they needed was some pads in case someone noticed all the money was filtering out. You? Yeah. What a guilty man. He's so upset. <laughs> <laughs> you should listen. Why should I listen to you? Because I am an honest man. <laughs> oh, great. Two honest mo's. So, who are they? Who's guilty? I think the mayor. Oh, and the contractors, Sawdust Construction. Hmm. The mayor, always high on my list of culprits. Do you know it? Fred, keep writing. Uh, not personally. I, I shook his hand a couple of times. Fred, if we ought to believe this, that Smedley actually was framed, and there's not going to be any visible connection to the mayor himself, <coughs> unlike his honor's crooked cronies. Oh, what I hated most was reading the papers. They kept going on about what a devious scheme it was. And I never clue what they were talking about. So how'd he do it? I wish I knew. All these checks got cashed. None of the names on the checks existed. And my name was all over every account. Sounds like a real mess. Huh. So how'd you get here, Smedley? Oh, they were taking me to the dentist on the jail bus. I got a bad feeling. I got, yeah. <laughs> it was an accident. Oh, a miraculous accident. That's how we met. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so where'd you get the guts? Oh, the bus smashed into a pawn shop. I took it out the window. But, oh, I know how to use it. Oh, I, I, I never thought this car was a good idea. I mean, how often do you get a chance like that? I wound up here. All I want to do is get the truth out of Marley. Yeah, I can tell you're a real tough guy, a real killer. Well, he's not a killer. He's not a bad old brain. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm no killer. But I'm not an embezzler either. And not a lousy fugitive. I was a model prisoner, though. Oh. Corazón. <laughs> what 
are you talking about? Oh, we were on the bus. I was praying very hard. I asked God for a sign that I would get to see my family again. My soul was very troubled. A sign? There was a God. One in the front of the bus and one in the back. And they carried guns. But the bus was going so fast that it flipped over. There was a great flash of light before my eyes, and I thought I was going to die. <clears throat> then I looked up, and the window was pushed out in front of me. The emergency exit. We were right next to it. <laughs> a miracle! And this man is the only other man to get out of the bus. We were given another chance. We are innocent men. You cannot turn your back on a miracle. Uh, there's uh, not much in our miracle file. So why were you in jail, Ramon? Uh, they call it being an illegal alien. Oh, uh, they were going to send me back. Uh, but then he said that this man, Mario, could perhaps get me a green card. He said he would make him do it. You know, if he can. But I have done nothing wrong. Well, crossing the borders without papers is illegal. Is it God's law or is it man's law? <laughs> <laughs> no trick questions. Oh, God, it's that woman. A woman? Answer it. <laughs> or rather consulting. Frederick, this is your mother. Emily, dear, how are you? So how are you, me, Frederick? You said you'd be home by now. Who's this, your work? Who is that? It's, it's nobody. Fred, I warned you about working for that cactus woman late on Christmas Eve of all nights. What kind of name is cactus anyway? I was named after the saint. Look, Mrs. Booker, something came up. Uh, uh, there is no saint cactus. Are you a Catholic? Occasionally. Uh, you have an office time. I thought so. It's not really a party, Adelaide. No, 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 there's a case here that's really got us tied up. Uh, not quite tied up, but busy, very busy. I'm right over there now. No, but Mrs. Booker, you can't. Just what kind of parties do you people throw? Are you so ashamed you don't want me there? I believe this is a very delicate situation you, here. You just have to trust me. You want me to trust a person named Cactus? I could trust a person named Iris or Wyatt. That would inspire a little confidence. Fred, are you sure you should be working for this woman anyway? Of course, women can be detectives. I would have been a detective if I wanted to. I know that, but a I detective know. should be dependable. There's Miss Marple, for example, Marple. <laughs> What'd you do that for? We have work to do. Well, she's just going to keep calling back and back and back. Not if we just connect the phone. <laughs> Look, Smedley, I've got Marley's files here, and I'm willing to make a trade. The files for the gun. Give me the gun. Give me the gun. Look, I don't work well as a hostage, and if you are innocent, then you don't need the gun. Okay. But can we get to work now, please? All right, now I get to set some ground rules. I'm going to give you tonight. If you're, if you're caught, you're on your own. I could lose my license here, and I've got damn little to go on, except for the fact that you look like you'd make a lousy criminal. It's a deal, Red. Right. Fred, go through Marley's files and see if you can find anything on Smedley or the Children's Hospital Fund. Or Tiny Tim. Oh, you got Marley's files. That's great. Oh, you think they'll clear me? Look, if somebody framed you, they did a great job. We're going to have to look for small things, inconsistencies. Look, chances are we're not going to find anything. The trail on this case is dead cold. Well, we got to find something. Marley didn't leave much. Just some files, some dusty old books, and this questionable object of art, my hat rack. Oh. Looks like Albert Einstein's. Show those tickets. Don't want to hear any more about it. Huh. It is Charles Dickens. Born 1812. Died 1870. A famous Victorian writer. Oh, he wrote with so much compassion. <laughs> <laughs> is this some sort of conspiracy? Uh, I was an English teacher at home. I studied 19th century English writing. It was fascinating. <laughs> Look at the files. Why don't you just take yourself to home? Well, hey, can you turn this thing on? Oh, that's nice. It's been a long time since I've seen a tree. A real green one. I used to like Christmas. I found it! And it looks uh, really complete. Oh, pretty thick. I didn't think it'd be so thick. Where are you on this night? How can I find you? 
I do. The dress I know, but the city I do not. But you are close. You must be. This country is so big. I ask you, why do they care about one poor man? I would be the best American. If only they would let me. Who's Trace her home? Me and Sposa. Uh, she was not there when they took me. She, she may not even know what happened to me. Uh, and now we have no telephone. So who, who can I tell? Who can I trust? So, uh, or travel fast on the street? I cannot risk her being deported too. I want my child born in this country. She's pregnant. They claim you arrested me during Las Posadas, the, the procession of the Holy Family. Sometimes I, I think there is no room for God. There is no room for us. There's never any room at the end, Ramon. Oh, wait a minute, Fred. We sat right here on a fire escape and watched the procession. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You, you saw it uh, from here? Oh, 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 that man Tommy, he was playing here that night. Yeah, yeah, I remember he played all they sang. That's right. Then I must stay here. But what about going to find her wife? We'll find her right here. There will be a procession later to midnight mass. They will carry candles and they will sing and she will be there in the streets. Won't they be out there looking for illegal aliens again? Oh, don't you believe in miracles? Well, I sure could use a miracle. Or two. What a bunch of crap! This is lies, all lies! <coughs> Keep reading, Smedley. Ramon, what's she like here, Teresa? She is beautiful. <coughs> Soft, kind. She's like Twilight. You do not know her. Do you know her so well? If only I could see her, but it, it is Christmas, and I do not have a gift for her. I was working, and I was to be paid on time. Oh, oh, but Teresa, she has been saving money. Pennies, the nickels, the dimes. All in a big glass job. It is very painful to me, but it makes her so happy that she can put this money aside and buy a gift for me. Does she believe in miracles? She loves. We have nothing else. Oh, my God. This all looks so real. I look guilty. I mean, look at this. It's a purchase order for electrical work. That company doesn't exist. That uh, looks like your signature. It is my signature. I don't know how they got it. Forgery? Uh, not according to the handwriting expert's testimony here. Don't you believe me? Instinct tells me you're not quite bright enough to be an embezzler. Instinct? You're right, I'm not. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> wow. This case summary looks really bad. Is this so funny to you? I don't know what you mean. This is the best looking file I've ever seen. Very impressive. That's what I mean. Your, your files are beautiful, but this, it's perfectly typed. There's no notes, no doodles, no whiteout, no sticky notes. It's perfect. It's too perfect. Details. This looks like it was made to order. Oh my god, this can't be real unless, unless Marley was some sort of neat freak, a compulsive little rascal. All right, Smedley. Let's say I believe you. Let's tear this place apart. Maybe we can find something. That's the spirit. I believe you, Smedley. You do? Sure I do. I can smell a phony file. <laughs> Fred, you've got to go home. <laughs> what? Adelaide is going to be frantic. No, uh, I'm not looking at I'm not doing this all the fun. Fun? Are you crazy? This is my first. This will be something. Something big. This is my first big shot of the case. I'm not leaving now. You need me. Hey, nobody hey. leaves. Hey. 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 Oh, it's only Fred. What do you mean, only Fred? <laughs> Mrs. Booker, who's this? Oh, I thought the door was locked. Fred, lock the door, please. Don't bother. Your parties are not that exclusive, especially in this neighborhood. I want to know what nonsense is going on. Someone hung the phone up on me. Uh, Mrs. Booker, uh, something came up. <laughs> I'm not interested. Nobody hangs up on your mother, Fred. I did not raise you to I know this is not a good place for you. Well, I didn't particularly think it was a good place for you either, but I let you make up your own mind about it. Oh, God. It's about time you remember God, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm just talking about him. Fred, who's this? I, he's, a, he's a friend. Smedley, man. Neville Smedley. Adley, book up. <laughs> I'm delighted to meet you. <laughs> Fred, you never told me about Mr. Smedley. Uh, this is Mr. Ramirez, another friend. Mucho gusto. Likewise, I suppose. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fred, you've been very mysterious today about not telling me where we're going. I believe this is a very delicate situation. 
it here. Fred, it's time to take your mother home. The Cactus! Hey, nobody leaves! We agree. That's part of the deal. Not until I get an explanation and an apology. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Booker, uh, Adelaide, but uh, I can't let you go. What? Why am I not? Because, uh, that's the rules. Once you're in, you can't leave until we find something. Wait a minute, Smedley. I make the rules, remember? Are we playing a game here? Game? Rules? What rules? Oh, it's nothing, Adelaide. Shut up, Smedley. This is not a game. There are too many people here already. At a party on Christmas Eve? Don't be silly. There's a reason for me to stay here. You're mentioning things, Adelaide. No, something's going on, and I know what it is. I mean, you hung up the phone on me because you knew I'd come right over. He says there's rules, and you, you say that you make up the rules. Where do they have rules? In games. And I love games. That's what this is, isn't it? It's a game. You planned this, didn't you, Fred? I mean, this is a murder mystery party, isn't it? A, a murder mystery party? No, please, no more talk of murder. It makes me so, so nervous. <laughs> you can't fool me. Exactly! <laughs> oh, I've been dying to go to a party. I mean, you know, all my senses Detective 
status in your Christmas Eve? Well, I don't know. I mean, you could be an undercover policeman, you know, dressed as a gardener, which could be a clue. Oh. I, you're ethnic, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, 
why they testified against me. Oh, and he's such a dear little man. A dear little man? <laughs> We're looking at everything in a new light. I understand. It could be right under our noses. I have to think. Wait, I'll come with you. Hey, the rules. I think better when I'm on the fire escape, and I want to see if that cruiser's still in the neighborhood. I will keep watch, my friend, and I want to take a closer look at these streets. Oh, that will give me some time now to think. Things over. I'll sit right here and soak in the atmosphere. Oh, it shocked my intuition so. Hey, what is this? Group effort. Hey, you got five minutes. Look, give me some space and don't throw any attention. Hey, what's that? Oh, it's my notes. See, I list the characters and what we have so far. And then I jot down my thoughts, and that's how I figure it out. Really? Yeah, you see, I belong to the Mystery Murder Book of the Month Club. Oh, I would like reading about crime so relaxing, don't you think? Maybe under other circumstances. <laughs> and then I list the characters and their motives. And where they were at the time of the crime. I know it's silly, but it amuses me. Oh no, I like lists too. Ledgers, nice straight columns, bottom lines. <laughs> oh, I appreciate a good bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide, uh, Mrs. Booker, uh, is there a Mr. Booker? Is he likely to show up here too? Oh no, he's been dead for years. It's just Fred and me all along. You know, if we're going to be a team, I think you should call me Adelaide. Yes, Adelaide. And I'm Neville. What's that you got there? Oh, it's my file. They got a file on you? Can I see it? It's all lies, you know. I didn't do it. I was framed. Oh, good. Still in character. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I'm going to be a gun mom, you have to tell me about yourself. Because I'm on your side. And that's what gun moms do. They t um, keep tra track of your gun, track your enemies, track of your aliases, you know, all things like that. Um, so. Do they keep me company? Of course I keep you company. I mean, even tough guys need company. <laughs> I'm not always such a tough guy. It's something I had to learn. Oh, really not a tough guy? It's very scary in jail. Especially if your credentials aren't up to par. Credentials? What kind of credentials? Crimes of a certain status. Uh, being convicted of embezzling. That's not a status crime. Not where I'm from. It's not right embarrassing. Oh, well, if you could pick your crime, what would it be? Oh, I guess I'd be a, uh, a kissing bandit. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. Oh, Neville, underneath it all, you're even a romantic, aren't you? Oh, I guess everyone is. I don't think I've ever met anyone like you, Adelaide. Count on it. Oh, I don't understand. What did I do wrong? The, the mayor's ball is a big deal. I thought she would love it. She loves spur-of-the-moment adventures. I planned it for weeks. Cactus, Cactus, what, what are you doing up there on the fire escape? Boy, Windsor, you really know how to pick them, don't you? Cactus, your boyfriend is gone now. Why do you date such losers? Underneath this suit, I have the soul of a lover. Oh, Cactus, Cactus, I know what I should do. I should pretend that I'm actually broke. <laughs> that, that I write avant-garde poetry about redheads. And that I paint badly. Oh, but Cactus, what's the use? You hate guys like me, so, so I'm a lawyer. 
So I was a successful lawyer. Forgive me. Is, is that such a crime? You know, Cactus, you would make a damn fine lawyer. Uh, you'd probably spend most of your time in contempt of court. <laughs> oh, my sweet contemptible you. <laughs> Katie, Katie Bridget O'Reilly, Cactus, oh, who named you that? I have half a mind to ask. What are you doing? We're getting along. Nobody gets along with Adelaide. <laughs> Pretty few hawks can really watch, watch the procession from here. And you really think she'll be out there, your Teresa? I do. I'm happy to let me find out. I'll have to work on it. Oh, oh no. What is it? It's Stuart. Shh, be quiet. Maybe he won't see us. Cactus! Cactus, is that you? Oh, I don't believe it. Cactus, uh, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. He's supposed to be at the mayor's ball. Cactus, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? It looks like you're out there on the fire escape. Uh, out there with some guy. Not just some guy. Fred! Fred, your secretary! <laughs> Stuart, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, me? I, I was just in the neighborhood. Have you been drinking? Me? No. <laughs> Cactus, are, are you having an affair with your secretary? Stuart, go home! Wait a minute. That's so tawdry. It that never handled the help. That's a little rule we like to follow down at the DA's office. Nothing is going on. I'll leave the DA out of this. We'll be the talk of the town. I like that. Is this matter with the law? Uh, this is a bad idea. You should go and talk. Uh, another guy? What do you think? You got two guys up there? Uh, don't be ridiculous. He's, um... I am the maintenance man. After <laughs> <laughs> the security check, I was asked to come and inspect a 40 window lights. On Christmas Eve? Yeah, well, you said this was a dangerous <laughs> neighborhood, so I'm just taking your word to heart. We do like it's fine. Everything up here is A. Okay. <laughs> Great job, guys. Certainly looks very sturdy. It's getting cold out. You should go inside now. Come wait, Cactus, Cactus, wait, wait. So so you're not having an affair? What are you talking about? Of course not. Cactus, Cactus, are you gonna you're gonna be around here for a little while? I'd like to talk to you. Uh, no, we're closing up here. Going home. You should too, Cinderella. I turned into a pumpkin. <laughs> After I was pricked by a cactus. <laughs> can, I, can I buy you a drink? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, uh, come on. You already ruined my plans. Uh, don't you have better things to do? The ball, the mayor? The mayor can wait. I'm going to stay right here until you say yes. Oh, you'll freeze. So what if I was a bum freezing in the streets? I think you would like me better. My cactus, I'll, I'll let you save me. I, I'll just come on up. No, you can't. No, no, it's okay. I'll be easy to save. You'll see, I, I won't even struggle or nothing. Uh, you're going to break your neck. So what? It's better than freezing in the streets. I'm serious. You could hurt yourself. So what is danger when love is indicted? Mm -hmm. oh, I mean involved. <laughs> I own it. Stuart, get down. Look, 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 I have a few things to wrap up here, and maybe I can meet you later. You're not kidding me, are you? I just don't know how long it'll be. Will you wait for me? Because you're always kidding me. Oh. I promise. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, I'll meet you at Rivers. You'll, you'll see. It's just like a party in there. That's even better than the mayor's Christmas ball. That sounds great. Absolutely, I swear. Cactus, wait, there's, there's something wrong with this picture. Uh, it's only because you're a little fuzzy. <laughs> Way to go, O'Reilly. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Don't worry, with uh, any luck, I'll pass out in the alley. What is Stuart Windsor doing here? He has a crush on you. Options, but it's not illegal. Besides, he's drunk. It's not like him to change plans on a whim. Excuse me.
for us. I mean, I know we think these guys are innocent, but he could throw a wrench into the case. Case? Did you say case? What does it matter if you're going to shut down the business? Well, if you want to get rid of these guys, oh. we're going to have to take a quitter. I'm not a quitter. Hey, we can't quit now. We're just getting started. <laughs> Dream of 
missing it. Fine, Stuart. If you want to stay, then here. Have a drink. Oh, a toast. What a good idea. But I never drink alone. You just did. Nah, the bar was full. <laughs> and our fellow merrymakers are actors. And they've gone through a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like a lot of trouble. Genuine city jail does. Huh? Where do you get those? You swipe them? Uh, they're rented. They're borrowed. Look, Stuart, perhaps we should come over here and have a little chat. A like chat? Yeah, the rules of the game are my territory. You see here, Mr. Smelly here is a convicted ambassador, but he's really innocent. And Mr. Ramirez here, he's an illegal alien. <laughs> They both just happen to uh, maybe fall off of a jail bus? What a coincidence. Yes. We talked about that to Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was just listening to something today that was funny. Oh! Mm. Oh. Mr. Kissimmee, I think you beat her to it. Oh. An unorthodox interrogation oh. If only we'd been under other circumstances. Oh, no. you listen to me? Can't just be obstructing justice, but I'm a reasonable man. Do it again. Must be careful with 
that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The, 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 the Tiny Tim Fund? That embezzlement? Don't forget that when Trump was at the office. Uh-uh. Not fair. If you've got something, you have to share it with all of us. And if it isn't here, then it probably doesn't exist. Smith, Smith, I remember Robert, now. Time's up. Look, Marley was the type of little from a notion that thinks code was a good time. And if I don't? Oh, Stuart, give me a break. No, no, Cactus. I'm not leaving. Stuart! No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay right here. I wanna, I wanna watch the way you operate. Who knows? Maybe I'll get kissed again. Maybe I'll have you arrested. Don't count on it. Look, what are you gonna be, one of the good guys? <laughs> Clearly, you don't like the good guys. No, Cactus, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you plenty of time. I'll give you all the time you need. God help me, I must be drunk. But don't try and shake me this time. You know, there's nothing here but novels. Now, this is a detective agency. And there's no Shamrock, no Hemp, not even Agatha Christie. Dickens? The Dickens are mine, Adelaide. Nothing. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, there's nothing underlined, no words marked, no, no pages turned. Both should be handled gently, with respect. Don't you see how beautiful they are? <laughs> <laughs> Cases these days. Bless you, wise guy. <laughs> well, um, maybe we should say goodbye. Hey, the game is not over yet, gentlemen. Uh, he's gonna give us some time. It's all over. We're never gonna find anything to clear me. It's back to the cell block. Oh, but you are not there now. One day. One lousy day. So long for the cat. Take it while you can. What have you found? We went through everything in the desk. I don't know. Not a whole lot of Marley. Just not a whole lot of Marley. It's just old files, tapes, folders, forms. Hey, 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 that looks familiar. That's the same purchase order. It's way. But how, how did that get in here? They're all the same. But how many of these are there? Small packing, about two hundred. And the packing slips addressed to Marley. You must have ordered them. Hey, look at this. The signature goes right through. But the name on the top, the payee, nothing. They could have changed the name. That's how they did it. The party didn't figure out. All these checks got cashed. None of the names on the checks existed. And my name was all over every account. So what does that mean? Hey, hey, don't look at me. I'm just the accessory. She's the sleuth. It means that Marley was in on the fraud. That's right, he knew! He had to know! Okay, this doesn't clear you, it just means that he was in on the frame. We still have to find a motive. Everybody's got a motive. There's gotta be more here than just Victorian excess. Uh, the life and adventures of Martin Chuzzlewit. Not this best, but still, you should take care of it. Cactus, now is time for you to lay all our cards on the table. What, Adelaide? Motive. I mean, Molly is dead. So someone had to want to have killed him to remove him. Wait, so, wait, wait, uh, Marley? Jake Marley? But, but he's dead. A little slow on the uptake? <laughs> Well, he was, uh, he was just a mousy little guy. How'd you know it? We, uh, we worked together on a couple of the bigger cases. Embezzlement, mostly. He was, he was sort of an expert at spotting fake accounts. Maybe he was an expert at spotting them because he designed them. <laughs> Maybe he knew you faked your expense accounts, Mr. Winter, so you wouldn't mind seeing him dead. Anthony, <laughs> not guilty. No, no, I I hardly knew him. But you also knew Neville Smedley. Uh, no, not personally, but I do remember.
remember the DA's case on him. Holding back your aces, huh? Uh, but what are you looking for in the books? Oh, I'm not sure. I love when she creates those seeds like that. Something just clicks. Clicks? It clicks. She wants to give it all up. Give what up? The office, the job, the mission. She wants to close us down. I don't believe it. Uh, Stuart, if we find any actual evidence that proves that Smedley is framed, I want you to cut a deal, setting him free on bond, pending a new trial. <laughs> Great expectations. I don't know. That, that, that's a big order, lady. I don't know about a deal, but Guy is an escaped convict. What are you talking about? You're the king of let's make a deal yeah, down there. You, you're the one who doesn't like deals. Not when they're guilty, but this guy. Nobody ever offered me a deal. Hey, you don't get a deal unless you cop a plea. But I didn't do it. Stuart, look at it. Look at this face. Do you think he's actually capable of embezzlement? Uh, well, no, uh, no, we never, we never could exactly figure out how the doofus got away with it so clean. But Smedley's name was all over it. Uh, the, the canceled bank checks, the uh, files tampered with, dual accounts. Smedley was with the city. He had the means. He had access. He had opportunity. I wouldn't steal money from those kids. Yeah, everyone says they're innocent. And Marley gave you the evidence. That's right. And he did it with this. Look, did you recover any of the stolen money? No, as a matter of fact. Well, I don't have it. If I had it, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Doesn't that suggest something to you? Uh, all right, all right. It, so if it was Marley who framed Smedley, then, then who was he working for? Scum, always close to the top. That'd be the mayor. Oh, the mayor? Nobody talks about the mayor. Oh, he goes on the top of my list and he gets a little gavel. Okay. <laughs> right, right, good, 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 okay. That could explain why we never found the money. Okay, nice theory. But Marley's dead. <laughs> you have no evidence. Oh, I not yet. yet. I have two cities. Please, Kathy. More gently. I can't wait to interview the mayor, but I do know one thing. Fred couldn't have done it. What? Of course he couldn't have done it. I, I wanted Marley dead because, uh, because he was scum. A lot of people are scum, Fred. He was creme de la scum. You yeah. have to do better than that, Frederick. My own mother does think I'm capable of murder. All right, you want a motive? I'll give you a motive. I, I want the office. Right, the city is out of control. Everyone knows that. I want Marley out of the way so Cats and I can take the office and open our business and solve crimes. So there. Fred, I'm impressed. That's silly. Nobody kills anyone over an office lease, Fred. But Adelaide, this building is rent controlled. Oh, really? Oh, in that case, it's different. Good job, Fred. <laughs> What about you, Mr. Ramirez? Well, I wanted to find him alive. Believe me, I like his taste in literature way too much. <laughs> oh, oh, besides, books teach us that murder is a bad idea. It always fires back. Backfires, Ramon. Oh, Likely story. Maybe you killed him for his collection, even if it was Dickens. Oh, oh what's the use? We're never going to find anything. I'm going back. I wanted to kill him. I came back here to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you are not helping yourself, amigo. <laughs> I was going to make Marley admit he knew the evidence was phony. And then I was going to make him give me a green card for Ramon here. And then I was going to kill him. Like he deserved. But when I got here, Red, Detective O'Reilly said he was already dead. Now we're cooking, so what's your motive, Cactus? I am the investigator in this case. I am the private eye, the gumshoe, the flat foot, the dick, the sloop, and the shakes. Being a detective is not your regular night five job. It takes certain talents, talents that I have. You understand? Well, if you're going to be a stickler for the rules. Nah, Cactus is making up her own rules again. She's always doing that. <laughs> Look, Marley sold out for dirty money. He turned his back on the profession. 
And you know, there's always my motive. Your motive? Yeah, you see, at the time of Molly's demise, Neville was in the slammer. So he, as his faithful gun mall, <laughs> may have wanted to take revenge on the treacherous Marlin. And who would suspect me? Well, uh, I certainly wouldn't. Don't be so slippy, Fred. I could do it. Yeah. Well, why would they nice lady like Jewel kill the bad man? For the most compelling reason of all! Passion! Ah. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. I understand. I believe in passion. But there's one problem. You see, at the time, <laughs> Smedley was still in the slam, so he didn't have the opportunity. Now, everybody else here had the opportunity, but not a strong enough motor. So that leaves me. But I couldn't be the killer. I mean, I don't think I was the killer. I should know if I were the killer. Nobody told me I was the killer. Of course. I know what that means. The game's not over. We need more clues. Yes, I have to find out more about Marley. What was he like when he first started out? Did he buy into the romance of it? Precious little romance here. Will you go check the file cabinet? <sighs> this doesn't look like a file. Wow! This is murder! Ooh. So there's another woman involved in the crime! <laughs> Give me that! Well, you, you told me to look in there. I, I didn't know it was the L for lingerie file. Oh, I forgot it was in there. Who is it a gift for? Your sainted mother? It is a gift from my Aunt Maureen to cheer me up at Christmas. Well, it is certainly cheering me up. <laughs> is that a crime? That is a no gift <laughs> that I would give. Oh, it is a fine gift. <laughs> Somebody must have spent a fortune. It's Christian Dior. It'll probably just wind up in a drawer somewhere. Well, that would be a shame. <sighs> Don't get presents in jail. Oh, not even from your gun mom. But half of the find what you are looking for. Not for me. Not for Smedley. No. Oh, Neville. No, here. Catch. Stop whining. For me. Candy. Sure, let's all have different kinds. You want to love them. Oh, they look delicious. It's not poisoned! Oh, in that case... <laughs> Look, uh, paint me a picture of Marley, anybody. He was a flaming, cloudy Yeah, more like a red head throwing us off balance. 
answer. Are you looking for something? Maybe I am. Did you plant something? <laughs> Maybe I did. Maybe I found something. Maybe I found a clue. Maybe you should give it to the nice detective. Maybe you should give it to the nice DA. But I'm the gun mom. And who else should have a gun? But a gun mom. No, I don't think they'll be careful. They could have prints on it. Oh, of course. Oh, no, that'll be no. Oh. <laughs> Look here. Uh, uh, bank notes and uh, a key. It looks like a 
goes to a security deposit box. This guy was loaded. What's a private stash? He hoarded it. The middleman. Well, you don't make the big box doing the street stuff. Hey, we can match these deposit dates with the payouts of the city checks. Well, it, this doesn't prove anything except that he didn't live long enough to enjoy it. Uh, I was wondering, I do not see the Scrooge book. Did you read that one? A Christmas Carol? Well, didn't everyone? Uh, it's not here. Uh, how many books did he write? Oh, well, more than 30, depending on which anthology you use as to the exact moment. He got me. I was going to read him on me. More evidence? <coughs> Wait a minute. This isn't a Christmas Carol. What are you talking about? It, it looks like it's a day book or a log of some kind. Look, there's, there's a few pages stuck together and then the rest is all handwriting. Let me see that. So crap. Stand still. <sighs> Don't read a watch over uh, like to see it. Uh, look, look, those numbers right there. What are those numbers? Fred, these numbers right here in the beginning. They look like file numbers. Hey, what's going on over here? That's what I want to know. Yes, but it looks like it corresponds to another set of numbers. You got something? You finally got something? This must be his own code. It's nice that you found something, but I thought we already solved this. Where are we getting with this? The procession will begin and Teresa will be joining. Fred, the file. Give me Smedley's file. Hey! It's my office! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this guy was obsessed with details. Look, Smedley, this is the... The case of the Tiny Tim fraud. How it, how it really happened. It looks like everything's here, even including a description of how he... I knew it! I knew it! But why me? Fezziwig. He refers to you as Fezziwig. It suits the pattern and it fits his sense of humor. Dickens Marley Fezziwig. I always hated that name. <laughs> you know, what kind of criminal keeps records on how he committed a crime? Why well, criminals keep great files? Yeah, and say somebody in city government wants to embezzle some money. So they hire Marley to frame a fall guy for it. Marley in turn blackmails whoever hired him. He keep meticulous records. Well, his specialty was faked accounts. Uh, he's even noted his feed from the city with the check number here. Uh, look, look, there must be 20 chapter headings here. 20 different cases. So does construction. Don't you see, Stuart? Smedley wasn't the only one that was framed. With these files and this book, think of the implication. Well, you'll, you'll just have to hand it all over to me. <laughs> Not so fast, Counselor. You know the procedure. But you have all of the groundwork. And you've got nothing without me. Oh, let me guess. You want to deal, don't you? I'm sure we can work something out. What about Smedley? This clears me, Adelaide. Well, that's wonderful, Neville. If only he had gone through regular channels. There weren't any regular channels to go through. But I'm innocent this proves it. But there'll be some jail time. Go back! Aww. Wait a minute. If we solve this, why are you still so excited? Look, look, Chum, it would look good if you turned yourself in. Look, don't worry. We still have plenty of time to just bring this all out. Stuart. You can find a judge, set bond, show evidence, call a press conference. You'd be a hey, hero. Hey, this looks real, Masonical. Uh, there'll be a reward. Of course, you don't qualify for it. But we would if it returned city funds. <gasps> it is real. Oh, my. Oh, my.
whether Matt Stewart or Ramon or Smedley, who in fact is innocent. You have never played the game. This wasn't a game. Life is a game, Adelaide. Only this time when you put the puzzle pieces together, you get more than just the ring at the bottom of the Cracker Jack's box. We're going to redeem Smedley's fate. When's the last time the good guys won, huh? When's the last time you got a bullseye? Use your noggin, Adelaide. You were, you were looking for excitement tonight. You were, you were hungry for it. You were, you were craving it. And you found it the most unlikely of places. Oh, oh, so that means that Neville is really innocent? It does look that way, Adelaide. Oh, Neville, that's wonderful. Mother, are you all right? Of course I am, Fred. I mean, this wasn't a game. It was a real adventure. Wait till I tell all my friends. This is going to make joyous parties look like amateur hour. I mean, poison hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
late. I really, I really do have something to tell you about our vacation. Well, I'm going to be too busy. I give up. No, you know, no, you didn't say you would be coming to Christmas dinner. Oh, of course I'm going to come, Addie. Oh, that's nice. These agreements. Uh. Fine. Another year. I'll hand deliver it tomorrow. Send me a postcard, will ya? Merry Christmas, boss. Frank! Mistletoe! That doesn't mean mistletoe! Hey, didn't I warn you about that guy? Uh, you mind waiting for us downstairs? We'll, we'll be down there in a few minutes. Oh, that's gonna tell me not to leave town. Get out of here! Woo! <laughs> 